Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone. Happy Saturday. Before we get started today, I wanted to thank the organizers of yesterday's vigil for the victims of the Nova Scotia shooting. The pandemic may have prevented us from gathering in person, but we still found a way to come together to celebrate the lives of the victims and support their families. It was an extremely moving tribute and was just yet another example of how Canadians are there for each other in difficult times. Once again, my thoughts and the thoughts of all Canadians are with the families and, and loved ones of the victims. This week, our government announced more targeted support for Canadians who are going through an especially hard time because of COVID-19. With the Canada Emergency Community Support Fund, we're giving more resources to charities and nonprofits so that they can continue their important work. We also unveiled our $9 billion plan to help students and recent grads get through the next few months. Because of COVID-19, there aren't as many jobs for students as last year, and without a job, it can be hard to pay for tuition or the day-to-day -day basics. So we launched the Canada Emergency Student Benefit, which gives students at least $1,250 a month from May to August. At the same time, we're creating 76,000 jobs for young people in sectors that need an extra hand right now or on the front line of the pandemic. And if students prefer to volunteer and help in the fight against COVID-19, they'll be eligible for a $1,000 to $5,000 grant through the new Canada Student Service Grant. Pour ce qui est des petites entreprises, on a annoncé hier qu'on avait conclu des ententes avec toutes les provinces et tous les territoires pour baisser de 75% leur loyer pour les mois d'avril, mai et juin. J'en profite aussi pour rappeler aux employeurs de toute taille qu'ils pourront présenter une demande dès lundi pour obtenir la subvention salariale d'urgence. En attendant, vous pouvez vous rendre sur le site de l'Agence du revenu pour calculer ce que la subvention couvrira. Notre gouvernement fournit de l'aide pour combler les besoins immédiats et urgents des travailleurs et des entreprises. En même temps, on pense aussi à ce qui nous attend au cours des prochains mois. On accorde plus de financement à la recherche médicale sur la COVID-19 et au développement de vaccins. Cette semaine, on a mis sur pied le groupe de travail sur l'immunité face à la COVID-19, dont la mission consiste à retracer les infections et à mieux comprendre comment on peut s'immuniser contre le virus. From the very beginning of the outbreak, our objectives as a government have been clear. Help those who need it most. Protect jobs. Support the small businesses that make our communities better place to call home and lay the groundwork for our economy to come roaring back once this crisis is over. In the past few weeks, our government introduced a series of measures to do just that, but we know there are more people to help, more work to be done. So today, we're announcing $62.5 million to support fish and seafood processors through this crisis. As we fight COVID-19, people who work in fish and seafood processing plants across the country are playing a crucial role when it comes to getting food to our tables. This funding will help ensure that they can safely continue their important work. We're giving more money to processors so that they can purchase personal protective equipment for workers, adapt to health protocols, and support other social distancing measures. For example, Fish processing plants could buy new equipment like freezers or storage space so that their product, food for Canadians, can stay good while they respond to a changing market. With this announcement, we're giving fish and seafood processors more resources to adapt to the many challenges brought on by the pandemic and above all, keep workers safe. Our fish sector is interconnected, so these investments will also have a positive impact on fish harvesters. On that note, I want to take a moment to recognize the tremendous work that is being done by every person who makes Canada's food system possible, including our food producers and fish harvesters. You keep our grocery stores stocked and our families fed. I know that the past few weeks have been really tough on you too, whether it be financially or emotionally. I want to thank you all for everything you do for us. You're providing an essential service to the country. 
We know that you have specific needs and asks right now, and we are actively exploring additional ways to support you as we move forward. Aujourd'hui, on annonce un investissement de 62.5 millions de dollars pour appuyer les transformateurs de poissons et de fruits de mer pendant la crise. Les gens qui travaillent dans ce domaine nourrissent nos familles à tous les jours. On investit pour leur permettre de poursuivre leur travail important en toute sécurité. C'est de l'argent que les transformateurs pourront utiliser pour acheter de l'équipement de protection personnelle pour leurs travailleurs, adapter leurs protocoles sanitaires et appuyer d'autres mesures de distanciation sociale. Les usines de transformation de poissons pourront utiliser ces fonds pour acheter des réfrigérateurs ou de l'espace de rangement pour entreposer leurs produits pour les vendre plus tard. Grâce à l'annonce d'aujourd'hui, les transformateurs de fruits de mer et de poissons disposeront des ressources nécessaires pour faire face aux défis de la pandémie et surtout pour protéger la santé et la sécurité de, des travailleurs. Comme nos secteurs des produits de la mer sont étroitement liés, ces investissements profiteront également aux pêcheurs. Je veux d'ailleurs prendre un moment pour souligner le travail incroyable de tous ceux qui travaillent dans le domaine de l'alimentation. Vous remplissez les étagères de nos épiceries de produits frais cultivés chez nous. Je sais que les dernières semaines ont été très difficiles pour vous aussi, que ce soit pour le plan financier ou émotionnel. Merci pour tout ce que vous faites pour nous. Nous savons que vous avez des demandes et des besoins particuliers et nous continuons d'évaluer plusieurs façons de vous aider. Comme je l'avais mentionné hier, je me suis entretenu avec les premiers ministres des provinces et des territoires et nous avons notamment parlé de la réouverture graduelle de l'économie. On travaille avec les administrateurs en chef de la santé publique pour établir des principes et des normes qui nous serviront tous. L'économie et les réalités de chaque province sont uniques, donc le timing et les mesures précises vont être différents d'une province à l'autre. Cela dit, et un travail de coordination important qui doit se faire à l'échelle nationale pour éviter toute confusion. On est en train d'établir un plan fondé sur la science, les données et l'avis des experts qui témoignent de notre ambition commune de sortir le pays de cette crise. La prochaine phase sera cruciale. Si on ne met pas les bonnes mesures en place, on pourrait perdre tous les progrès qui ont été réalisés jusqu'à présent. Nos discussions se poursuivent. On va continuer de travailler ensemble pour assurer la sécurité de tous les Canadiens. Yesterday, I had a call with the First Ministers and we talked about putting together a joint statement outlining what needs to be done to reopen the economy. We're working together with Canada's chief medical officers to establish principles and guidelines for us all. We have to be mindful that the economy and the realities of each province and territory are unique so the timing and specific measures will be different across jurisdictions. We need a coordinated approach nationally to avoid any confusion amongst Canadians. We're working together on a plan based on science, data and expert advice that lays out our common ambition to see our country through this. If we don't get the next phase right, we risk losing all the progress we've made so far. These conversations are ongoing and we will keep working together for all Canadians. Tomorrow, there won't be any press conferences, either by doctors or myself, so I want to close this morning to talking directly to young Canadians, as I do every weekend. To all the kids watching out there, you're doing great. Keep helping out around the house, try to keep up with your schoolwork, and above all, stay positive. This is a tough time, but we're going to get through this together. And to young people out there, many of you are students who need extra help, and we're here for you. This week, we announced a series of measures to support you during this crisis. But we need your help, too. This is a moment in our country's history that we will look back on and ask each of ourselves what we did for our community, for our country. What did we do to serve our country? to help the world. And as you look at what you can do this summer, please remember that there are seniors who need your help. There are frontline workers, including in our medical professions, who could use a helping hand. 
And there are agricultural farmers and producers who'd love to see you step up to help feed Canadians. Look at how you can use your energy, your drive, your vision for making the world a better place and make it so. How we get through this as a country depends on each of us, the choices we make, the actions we take. So this weekend, stay home, keep washing your hands, and if you need to go out for groceries, keep at least two meters apart from each other. And think about what you can do in the fight against COVID-19 to support our frontline workers, to help your community. I know that we will help each other to get through this because that's just who we are as Canadians. Merci beaucoup. Have a great weekend.